just like that. The regular Evans right. City Council meeting scheduled for 7 p.m. May 19, 2015 will now come to order. Roll call. Councillor Hogue. Here. Councillor Koivinen. Here. Councillor Lillis. Here. Councillor Hadrava. Here. Mayor Vaisalovich. Here. Item C, approval of minutes. City Council <coughs> Workshop, May 5th. City Council meeting, May 5th. City Council Workshop, May 15th. No one has any changes or additions. Call for a motion that we approve these minutes as they are printed. So moved. Support. Motion made by Coyman and support by Hidrava. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item D, approval of agenda. We've got an item 14 to add, which is a, to do a temporary construction for uh, aqua power. That'll be item number 14. Anyone else have anything to add or delete off the agenda? If not, I'll call for a motion that we approve tonight's agenda with those changes. So moved. Motion made by Lillis. Do I have support? I'll support. Worked by Hogue. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We have no appointments or presentations at this point. If anyone from the audience wishes to address the council, we allow uh, five minutes during this period. Otherwise, we allow time at the end of the meeting. Item G, consent agenda. Approval of payroll, April 16th through the 30th. Removal of police officer from probationary status. That's Officer Allen. Right, Tim? And approval for mayor, city council, city administrator to attend the 2015 League of Minnesota City's annual conference in Duluth. If anybody wants to go, there are certain days, certain things going on. So if we have a schedule change, it's one of the few times it's really close to us. Just let Jackie know and she can help you make the arrangements. And item four, St. Louis County Community Development Brock block grant program agreement between St. Louis County and the City of Evelyn. If no one has any questions or changes, call for a motion that we approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion made by Coyvin and do I have a support? I'll support. Support by Hogue. Any further discussion? Just one question for Chief. How many full-time officers do we have now, Chief? Um, including myself, 10. 10 total. Any, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. No public hearings at this time. We have no unfinished business. And we move on to item J1 under new business. Resignation of Lonnie Ward from the Everest Virginia Airport Authority. And I have a motion that we accept Lonnie's resignation and send him a letter of thanks for his time on that commission. I would... Oh. I'll make that motion. Then I'll second it, and I'd just like to say that I know he's been out there, and he's, he's gone through a lot out there, so I'd like to thank him for his time out there. Absolutely. He's done a good job. <laughs> yes, he's done a very good job. And Lonnie, if you're watching, we've got some other commissions. <laughs> <laughs> good pitch, Joe. I Real tried. Good pitch. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item two, consider accepting proposal from Stantec Incorporated for the city auditorium main level restroom renovation professional services. This is a change. We wanted to bid out uh, the restroom project in uh, three phases or three pieces. Proposal we got in front of us from Stantec. A lot of the information on that they can use again from what they did. If no one has any questions, call for a motion that we accept the proposal for Stantec. What are you missing? Which one is that? Do we go past number three? We're on two. Yeah. Oh, how'd I get ahead? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, I'm lost too. Okay, motion that we approve the proposal from Stantec for the auditorium restrooms. 
I'll make that motion, Mayor. I don't see that we have much choice. We need to have finish that project, and well, hope, we need professional services. Well, I'm hoping that that'll open it up to a lot more bidders, smaller ones, who don't want to take you know a complicated project down that was busted down. Motion made by Lillis. Do I have support? I'll support. Yeah. Oh. Support by Hogue. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carried. Number three, authorize city staff to submit a request for placement on the intended use plan for drinking water revolving loan fund for a $750,000 gallon elevated water tank. That's the big tank in town. Have a motion that we authorize Mike to proceed. This is uh, something we've done before. So um, I'll support. Motion made by Koivinen, support by Drava. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <sighs> Item four, consider approving change order number six for Evelyn City Auditorium renovation phase two. Mike, does this kind of finish it up then? I hope that this is going to be it for change orders, and this is actually a decreasing change order. Uh, I see that. 2500 So there's just, I think, one or two remaining punch list items, so hopefully it won't be too long and you'll have a final payment uh, application in front of you for your consideration. And we're that much closer to public use. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> we have a motion that we accept this change order. And approve it as it is. It's not too often you get money back. No, it's scary. <laughs> it's scary. Wow. <laughs> We're not really. I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll support it. Motion made by Hadrava, support by Koivinen. Any further discussion? You know, that's a kind of a complicated project. You know, I, I was just going to ask, is, is, and I know this is probably a dumb question, but I got to ask it. For all of these bids that we put out, wh wh when these guys bid it, can we say, you bid it, that's it, no change orders? I mean, we've had projects that we've had, God, five change orders. I mean, if you're bidding something, then bid it. I think where you run into the majority of your change orders are unforeseen things. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, you, you know, if you tear into a wall, sometimes you, you anticipate you're looking at old plans that may be detailed, may not be detailed. Sometimes you make an assumption. Uh, sometimes something that appears to work when you put it in place doesn't work. Uh, same thing with underground construction time where you run into rock units. Utilities you find are, are different. So that's where a lot of the change orders result in. And I think it's always, you know, I guess my, my feeling's always bad. It's, you try to be fair with these people. You, know, you give them something to bid on. Hope they give you a good, honest bid. Like that, if it's different, you, know, you should be fair with them to make sure that. Well, yeah. And see, and I, and I trust your and I trust you overlooking it. But I mean, what a fine way that you could low salt, low ball a city, and then all of a sudden say, "Well, now let's jab them with five change orders." You well, know, I think that's where you know if you're engineer, or your architect. Okay. You know, that's where they they curve that. Thing. It can be challenging. Oh, I'll bet. It was just something that I was approached about, and then I started thinking about it, and it was just gnawing on me because we've had a lot of change orders. Well, you know, that that's, the mechanical stuff was just ancient. Yeah. Probably the original stuff. So when you're trying to bid what's compatible, what's not, you know, like when they made the changes for the duct work, mm -hmm. the lighting is, they plugged some vents up. Well, they just found that out, you know, because yeah. well, that building's never had anything like this done to it really since it was built. And when you spec it out so detailed, mm -hmm. you know, if it calls for 300 feet of pipe, but 400, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They bid on the 300, but you need 400 to get it done, well, that would be a change order then. You know, it's, it's pretty complicated thing, something that old. That it, it wasn't, it was not only the auditorium, it was other right. projects that we've had done in this town mm -hmm. that we've had a lot of change orders come up and you just step back and say, really? Well, you like know, Jones, I can see some of them when you run into problems, I, I, but well, there's some that I questionable. Jones Street, that cribbing over that yeah. old steam line, you know yep. what I mean? Who the heck thought? Or when Granta Jones came down, that parking lot and all that, there was a few there. 
Well, he says, just something that I figured that people should know because, you know, we're kind of dumbfounded the same way everybody else is when they keep saying change orders. It's luck of the draw. Yeah. <laughs> you know, really. Yeah, it is. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number five, ex consider accepting quotation for 2015 curb and sidewalk replacement. The bids were very, very close, one or one percent or less difference, but we've had 3D before the last couple of years, and I don't think they finished last year. So for this project, I'd recommend that we give the bid for the sidewalks to 3D for this year. Give the bid to yeah, the city. Yeah, I'll, I'll make that motion. Motion made by Hogue. Do I have a support? <clears throat> I'll support it. Work by Drava. Any further discussion? Yeah, I've, I've got to say something here because it's been <clears throat> nine at me because when I first got on a council, I had something similar to this. And I have nothing against 3D construction because they've done good work for us. But I have to vote no on this because I've got to go with what Mike said, CNC winger because that's what he believes it should go with, and he was just a little bit cheaper. And like I said, I have nothing against 3D. But when I bid like this for the golf course one time, I lost two good friends over because I went with the way I should have went. So and I'm going to stick to my guns right now, and I have to say no. Because I looked at it, it's, uh, we're so close. You have somebody who's already in there. It could cost you more in the long run. It's yep. like these change orders. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. Motion carried. Number, number six, follow up. It's Catherine's house and exactly, we all toured that and we feel it does meet, it's such a, a new operation, but it does meet the existing zoning. And Jackie, what were they looking for? Uh, well, a letter was sent out from yep. the um, city attorney and so they would like um, you folks to go on record saying that you understand and accept you know, the use and that they're going to be in town. Contingent on the fact that the zoning administrator will issue the zoning permit for the use of 426 Monroe after he gets the state permit. And he had told them that a year ago, so they already know that. And then also the 428 building, which is right next to it, mm -hmm. that that is also an acceptable permitted use in the zone and that you say that you understand that's also acceptable contingent on permit being issued. Yeah, they know, want to keep uh, moving. She's getting pretty close to getting her state permit. I know some of the residents around there have been in there touring, you know, they move mm -hmm. tour and uh, one of them said they're waiting for, I think, state inspectors. They have to close up a few walls yet to, yeah. since we were in there. I don't know if we ever told anybody, but we all, <clears throat> excuse me, we all got a tour of that building. And I got to tell you, I would have never thought in Evelyn, Minnesota, we'd have a facility like that because somebody has spent, they've spent some good money in here. It looks really nice and it just, I was, couldn't believe it. <laughs> well, the like, reason uh, we all toured it, we got some poor information to start with. Yes. And Shelly gave us the correct information. We toured the place. It's pretty impressive. Well, we all kind of <laughs> remember what the building used to look like. Yeah. And when you walk in that door now, it's like, am I in Evelyn, Minnesota? I mean, it's really nice. My hat's off to her. And then she's also been working with the police chief, the fire chief, and the um, ambulance director on all those items. The chief has been there multiple times, the fire chief. Tim's been there, and they just want to make sure that we're, you know, we know the ins and outs, literally, the way in and the way out to help serve the folks with fire and ambulance. She still doesn't have a anticipated opening date? You know, Brian, she does not have that permit in hand. And um, Fire Chief Haas was there either last week or the week before with her again to give her some more ideas about operational things. But until she gets that board and lodge license, she's not ready to open. I know they're trying to, you know, um, tighten up those loose ends and those things hanging out there, but I haven't heard of a specific date. I think she really wanted some um, affirmation from you folks mm -hmm. that it's acceptable to use so that she can keep moving on. I know she word the motion that we aren't supportive of the project and it is in compliance with the existing zoning. Does that sound good to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yep. We have a motion and that we'll uh, support Catherine's house with that uh, wording. So moved. Motion made by Hope. Do I have a support? I'll support it. Support by Drava. Any further discussion? Yes, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number seven. 
Are these aqua power now? There's a few changes to the agreement. Do we have to take them all separately, Bonnie, or can you group them? We're kind of backtracking on what we already think, did. I think we can do the uh, number seven, eight, seven, eight, and fourteen. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, this all turned out where we had a change of agreement because we had a bid. The road out, they couldn't. The rules have changed. Does anyone have any objections if we group those three together, seven, eight, and fourteen? Because awarding the bid, we have to do that separately on its own. Well, can I call for a motion then that we approve the agreements with Aqua Powers, item seven, eight, and fourteen? So moved. Motion made by Koivinen. Do I have support? I'll support. Support by hold. Any further discussion? Yeah, evidently, uh, the, kind of the rules have changed and it got us more involved in the process, the private businesses. But if that's the way it's got to be, that's the way it's got to be. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number nine, consider awarding bid for roadway construction as a part of the Aqua Power site expansion. And the bid goes to Musabi Batuminas for $52,104. And that does access Mike off of Hat Trick, right? Or, oh. Yes, it is that, that access on Hat Trick. Just so everybody knows that, okay, that's, looks like it's kind of brushed out already. We have a motion that we award the bid to Musabi Batuminas for the Aqua Power Project. I'll make the motion. Motion made by Hadrava. Do we have a support? Support. Support by Hogue. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item number 10, law enforcement service agreement between the city of Eveleth and the town of Fail. Tim, do you want to kind of elaborate for the audience? Uh, Mayor Council. Oh. Um, historically, um, Fail Township has had their own officer um, typically 20 hours a week. Um, many years ago, about 22 years ago, I was known as a Fail Flash Ray small stint um, uh, while I worked in Eveleth here for a short time as well. Um, so here we go 24 years later, um, or 22 years later, uh, it's come full circle. An opportunity has presented itself where the present Fail officer has um, re uh, retired. Um, typically when he was not working, the um, calls for service were um, sent over to the Sheriff's Department. The City of Eveleth has five major properties out in Fail Township consisting of the Veterans Park, the airport, um, the water treatment plant, the golf course, and the uh, gravel pit by St. Mary's Lake. Um, our officers are out there on a daily basis um, checking the property. Um, so Fail had approached us uh, and inquired about um, providing law enforcement services for them. Um, with the mayor and council support, um, I had gone out to Fail uh, a few weeks ago and gave them a proposal. Um, they were very receptive to that. Um, so with a lot of thanks, uh, some work from Bonnie, um, writing up a law enforcement agreement. Um, we are proposing to provide 24-7 uh, uh, calls for service for Fail Township. Um, so if a, a Fail resident needs a police, they're going to be, uh, an Eveleth officer is going to be responding. Um, they are in turn going to um, be providing us with some, uh, some money each month. This contract is a temporary basis from June 1st to the end of the year. Um, give it a try to see how both uh, communities uh, uh, respond to it. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I know our officers are looking forward to it. Uh, um, again, uh, thank you to the mayor and the council for your approval, Bonnie, um, Jackie, uh, my staff, uh, and the uh, bail board. Um, I, I think this could be a good, uh, good fit for both communities. Um, so with that, um, the agreement is in front of you. Okay, I know. And it was it's kind of a frustrating situation for some of the residents. You have an Eveleth address, and I was stopped at the shortstop a few months back, and I got my head bit off. Cop car went by their house 30 miles an hour, and they can't stop. <laughs> and I had to explain the history and what's going on. And I think it's I think it's a real good fit because the township has really evolved. 
heavy urban setting, a lot of families out there with kids. I think, I think it'll work out very well. Mm -hmm. And typically when a call does come out, um, we always responded out to the, uh, the majority of the more serious calls and we uh, get out there first a lot of the times. Um, you know, the Sheriff's Department, excellent uh, department, but they're spread a little thin. Um, and, and I think it would just be a good fit with the city of Edlip responding out there. Yeah, we've got so much property out there. We're half the time we're probably right out there in the vicinity. Anyone have any questions or anything? Comments on the agreement? Uh, I just have a couple of quick questions. I'm sure that can be addressed quite handily. Um, with regard to prosecution costs, Chief. I noticed that uh, this particular agreement doesn't um, make reference to uh, who is responsible for the payment of the prosecution costs. Do we have a plan in mind there? Uh, we do, and it was uh, quite a lengthy plan, and I didn't really uh, indulge into it. It was quite lengthy, but right now as it stands, the um, prosecution of um, misdemeanors, gross misdemeanors, misdemeanors and felonies are... Um, prosecuted by the county attorney's office. In turn, any fine reimbursement goes to the county. Um, the city attorney, um, uh, Klosmo, uh, uh, their agency will prosecute the ordinances. Um, under the new proposal, we've gone back and forth. Uh, Fail Township um, is going to have a proposal with um, uh, Klosmo's eight, um, attorney's office to do the misdemeanor prosecution and in turn fail will get the pro, um, any proceeds from the fines. So as it stands, it's really separate from us. The city of Eveleth will not be responsible for prosecution costs uh, during this agreement period. Thank you. Any other questions? Call for a motion to accept this agreement between the city of Eveleth and the town of Fail. I'll make that motion, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. I'll second it. Retired chief. <laughs> <laughs> Motion made by Lilith, support by Andrava. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Item number 11. Request from the police chief to sell forfeited vehicle. I'm getting rid of some of the upscale stuff, Tim. Oh, uh, we do. We have a 2009 <laughs> uh, Yamaha ATV. I did check with um, Mike uh, that there is no use uh, currently for any use by the city. Did so you check with the counselors? <laughs> <laughs> In November? I don't think you didn't check with any of us. <laughs> Come deer season. Yeah. So it would be my request to um, All right. go through Dubit again. We have a motion. Are we authorized the chief to uh, sell this forfeited vehicle? I'll make that motion, Mayor. Motion made by Lillis. Do I have support? I'll support. Support by Hogue. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number 12, donation request from the Eveleth 4th of July Committee and announce the 2015 Great Parade Grand Marshal, which will be Esther Salmi. She's been pretty active in the community for many years. It's nice to see Esther get that honor. And I think the agreement is the standard one, uh, what we do for the committee. Yeah, I think it's usually 2,500. Yeah. It used to be five and we dropped it to 25 just to show the support. Well, that's, that's a big thing for Eveleth. You know, that's known what, far beyond the area, what goes on the 4th of July yep. here. We have a motion that we approve the request from the 4th of July committee as it stands. So moved. I'll support it. Motion made by Hoag, support by Drava. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item 13, this is the reason I wanted to uh, move 14 with the others, Thaco Power. Letter regarding Kurt Fest, 2015. I'm not really... Well, they kind of <coughs> brought this to me, <coughs> so I had them write up a letter and bring it up here. What they want or what they are planning to do, and they've already checked with the chief, and they've been working with the chief, is they want to have some bands in all the bars. They used to have this at uh, the old Siegel's building. 
and there'd be 30 bands would be playing there all day and night. So they thought of maybe coming now and just playing to each bars, like uh, the Roosevelt, uh, Eggies, Hoagies, Sue's, they'll all have like five bands playing in them. You know, so many minute things and it, that way it kind of creates, you know, a good day for the bars and hotels and it's just something they're trying. So I said we had to get a letter to the city and see uh, what you guys thought of it. Well, Chief, can we handle that? <clears throat> uh, Mayor and Council, I did have a conversation with uh, David Marcaccini. He was very uh, accommodating, uh, straightforward. Um, it appears most of the activities will be inside uh, the, uh, each licensed uh, liquor facility. So um, and pretty much they would be handling their own inside. Um, there would be some at East uh, Monroe Park. Um, we've discussed the possibly having a um, bathroom facilities outside to accommodate, but it shouldn't be a problem on a public safety standpoint. And, and these indicates there could be a lot of people, so um, we shouldn't have a problem with it, though. Okay. And I was, you know, thinking here, this might be a real busy weekend because... <clears throat> the Labor Day weekend? No, I don't think so. Not Labor Day weekend. But I think that Friday at the end of August also the car show, corn feed, isn't that? Much probably the week before. Just the week before? Yeah, I thought that was more towards the middle of the month, isn't it? I thought with Mr. Strians, the car show was the 21st. Oh, oh okay. <clears throat> We're good then. I just, when I read that date, I'm like, oh, I hope there's no problem. Yeah, so they should have a good couple weekends in August for yeah. the... For Best place to be on the range in August, Eveleth, Minnesota. <laughs> what do you mean? Starting July 4th. Yeah. Starting July 4th. Right Come for September the fourth weekend oh. and stay till August. <laughs> Mayor, I guess I'd be in favor of this proposal. I do have a concern about the uh, Monroe Park utilization, since it is a residential district. I'm wondering if we're going to have any problems, or, you know, for the, the residents having a problem with the noise, uh, you know, if they're going to be running until 8 p.m. You know, that, have you addressed that at all, Chief? Or? Uh, we did discuss it. I think 8 o'clock would probably be the max. I think it was more into the afternoon, and um, that could be a potential problem very well. But uh, um, my feeling was I thought it was going to be done earlier. Okay. Uh, you know, I'd be and, yeah. I'd be a lot more comfortable if we cut it off by supper time. You know, the and I know we know we have some seniors that live in that particular area there. You know, I can't say whether or not they'd be offended by it or not, but it's just a concern of mine that and I know that there are people that are more sensitive to noise than others. So And, and maybe that they could put a band on there, a couple bands that aren't going to play some of that. I really can't tell you what kind of music it is, but it's the stuff they like to listen to. Maybe some softer music down that way. Yeah. Well, we'll might help. Right, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. You know, and hopefully it's not music that rocks people's houses, it vibrates the pictures off the walls <laughs> and so forth. Because they're in close proximity there with... Uh, I know some of that polka music can get rocking pretty yeah. good too. <laughs> <coughs> you just don't want the profanity. Yeah. yeah. If there happened to be that kind of music, yeah, I agree. But otherwise, yeah, I'm totally in support of it. Anyone else have any discussion or questions or concerns on this? Someone want to put this in the form of a motion that we approve this? I'll, I'll put it in the form of the motion. Well, I'll support it. Motion made by Hogue. Seconded by Koivinen. No, you're going to get all the calls if there's trouble, on Brian. Well, he's probably going to be the biggest <laughs> troublemaker. I just, yeah, you're right. He's going to be playing the drums. Uh, you're right. I'm going to be screaming on the microphone. You know what he just told me? Tim picked him up when he was working out in fail. What, As the fail flash? Yeah. Said, said fail flash. I never knew that. I hear you've been getting picked oh. up lots. Oh, <laughs> I thought that stop sign was optional. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Well, that takes care of new business. Anybody have anything? Many committee reports or presentations? I have something. 
I was handed this before I came up here, so. I'd like to thank the City of Eveleth and the EDA for the wonderful, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, Jackie? Citywide garage. The citywide garage sale that went on, rummage sale that went, in went on in town last weekend. There was 50% uh, more people this year that had. We had 67 people signed up, not counting the people that slid in anyway. You know, there was, uh, we had a little booth and we had over 500 people there, you know, in two days. So there was a lot of people riding around town. It's a great thing for the town. You just don't want to be driving in town that day because <laughs> they look left and turn right. But I would like to thank everybody for coming and, and thanking uh, the EDA and for all the work and stuff everybody did. It was a huge success. The weather was all right, even though two weeks earlier it was 80 degrees, but I'm not saying anything. But I'd just <laughs> like to thank them. Well, living on the no longest, narrowest alley in town <laughs> and driving clear to the top and having five cars parked in the middle of the alley every single time. <laughs> I had to back up and I held my patience and said it's good for the community Bradley <laughs> turn around and smile and I did but uh, so I hope everybody else that ran into that problem did the same thing uh, and things went as smooth as uh, as it went it's a pretty good deal for everyone. a lot of people and I hope the uh, the uh, sandwiches up at the IJ for the fire department I, I think they had a good crew of oh, people they sold there. out our early yeah so I mean yeah. it was there was a lot of people flying around town I mean it's like a national holiday for garage sailing so you know hats off to everybody who did something people are getting pretty cagey up where I live the East Range Day Activity Center had and the neighbors had their stuff in the front there so people could park and go to five six events there the place that was really interesting. There's quite a few people on that street. The only thing I didn't see was we've got to get these little entrepreneurs, these young kids, to get out and start selling their Kool-Aid on days like that. Hell, that'd be a good $20 bill they could make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's they sell them on the wrong day. Come on, parents. <clears throat> Anyone else have anything to bring up? Right. I, I have no... Right. The meetings this month were canceled for EDA and... HRA, but uh, I just want to thank um, Mike Wisco and the architects and uh, mayor and the rest of the council on the work that's been going into the auditorium over the last <coughs> couple years now, and we've really come a long ways, and we're this close to having a nice, beautiful facility for the public to use, and. Just be, bear with us for a little more and it's, it's going to be open it's, and you're going to like it. But I just want to say good job by everybody. Well, I think it's a good thing because when you were on your first term is kind of when we started this mm -hmm. and then you took a couple year hiatus and then you're back and it's just about done. Yeah. So, I mean, it's good for you. More got done when I was gone. <laughs> yeah. But, it, you know, it's, this is something you helped start and it's good to have you here when it's going to be finished. I'm excited. And I think there's a lot of buzz in town. A lot of uh, the well, citizens that haven't been in there in 40 years. Mm -hmm. you know, I wonder what it looks like. It's there's a different talk. animal to yeah. Yeah. get functional again. You know, it's, yeah. it's time has come again. And I did get a lot of pushback from people. Like, why can't you use that money for um, streets, you know, other stuff in town, you know, ball fields, parks. And uh, or into our buildings, you know, public buildings. Give, I don't know what they're talking about, but anyways, it's a building that's no community our size and our kind of situation is ever going to build. It's not going to happen. And demolition for that building would be half, over half of renovation. So it's a win-win situation. And I think we're going in the right direction. Well, when the money's hanging out there, you might as well grab it, like low-hanging fruit. Absolutely. Because if you don't take it, it's not like they're going to save it. You know, it's going somewhere else. Yeah. Take it and spend it. Because you only get so much for streets, you know. Yeah. They don't let you use it for what you want. <laughs> they got specific purposes. But, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, kind of excited. You know, we took a few steps back, but we're, we're making progress. We're moving forward on that one. But what people, yeah, like you said, people need to realize, <clears throat> excuse me, is that 
that money is earmarked for that project only. Yep. You know, it's money given to yep. us. We can't think, hmm, what should we do with this? Well, let's put this into an old building. You know, we didn't have the option to put it into streets, um, water towers, um, you know, other stuff, infrastructure stuff. So well, just I mean, I think the public needs to be. Yeah, the money that was spent in there was earmarked for the auditorium yeah. and the auditorium only. It's not like we're digging into our own pockets to do this. It was yep. meant for that. Yep, very little of the city money was used. So. You know the thing with that building too, what do you do? Put an elevator in this building? You know how much that would cost? Yep. If we have public hearings and meetings now, you can always move the council meeting there. If it's something big where you're going to have a lot of people. Yeah, we have that hearing. problem. People can't get up <laughs> the stairs. I mean, there ain't a lot of room here anyway. <laughs> oh, you're, you're making it tough on me, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Anyone else in the council have anything further to bring up? I got a couple little things. Uh, the Veterans Park is up and running real hard and heavy, I hear. Uh, I missed the meeting last night, Mike, I apologize. Uh, but I understand we're moving right along and we have rentals available for whoever wants to rent the pavilion and the kitchen out there, so please contact us. Uh, and uh, enjoy the park this summer. With that, I have Jack Raniker and Richard Colburn have about 23 years of photos of the clown band, and they're going to do an exhibit. And I believe it is July 20 or June 22nd through July 7th. And they're going to be in the Seagulls building, and there'll be a silent auction also. Uh, and there will be a small gate fee of a dollar to uh, come into the Seagulls building. Um, I think it would be a good thing to go look at some really neat old pictures over the 4th and for that week uh, uh, preceding that. So uh, stop by and say hi and take a look. Maybe it will be something you would like to take uh, and bid on. Can I add to that? Um, I've been in the clown band. This will be my 20th summer, 21st summer. And now there's... Some years we had 10 parades. Most years, you know, we have six or so. But he's been at every parade. He's been way more parades than I've been, and he lives in Iowa. He recently has moved up here, Dick Colburn. And he's got literally 50-some <coughs> thousand photos. Is that the white-haired guy? Yes. The older guy? Yep. Yes. If we played in Two Harbors, he was in Two Harbors. He was at Christmas City and North Parade. <clears throat> he's at Gilbert, he's at Eveleth. So his amount of uh, pictures that he has is unreal. So you're going to see some good stuff. And it's going to be a lot of stuff, too, <coughs> of people that have passed. You know what I mean? So you see some mm -hmm. old friends and family in there. So he's been doing it longer than I've been in the clown band because he was doing it my first year. So just goes to show how much... <coughs> He has and He's the one that has that camera where you yep. put the, the sheet over, you know, the old fashioned, and it's got exposed for so long. Does that, and he has all his other equipment. But it's, it'll be an exciting thing to see. It will be. Um, and I'll ask the uh, deputy clerk to uh, put this on our webpage also uh, for everybody. And I think it's another nice thing to have over the 4th of July and the week preceding. And, uh, support the clown band a little bit. They uh, turn around with the money they make. They usually uh, support some group very... Yep, they've done scholarships in the past. Very good with all their extra money that they make on the parades and stuff, so it's a good group. It was nice to see them down a hip for the roller. It was. Roller game, and I was really surprised everybody... Roller Derby in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, i never seen that hip that full nope. for years. We got roller derby, we got the auditorium, we're moving on. Takes a while to get things put together, but now the puzzles are, pieces are falling in yep. place. Well, I don't have anything further to bring up. Steph, do you have anything to add? Yeah. Chief, do you have anything? Mike? I actually have two items, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the first, yesterday in the mail, I received a copy of the Minnesota Department of Transportation, or MnDOT's, uh, Highway Improvement Plan for Northeastern Minnesota for the years 2015 through 2019. And they are planning a project uh, on Highway 53 in Eveleth in 2016. They're planning to overlay Highway 53 from the uh, Highway 37, Vail Road, County Road 101 overpass uh, 
up into up to the midway area. We also do some culvert replacement, overlay of bullet lanes, and uh, EDA improvements at the intersection by Slumberland, JM Auto, and the funding to let the project in November of 2015 with construction next summer. That EDA uh, improvement at the intersection there, that's that's a, a walking center, so if somebody wants to come from Slumberland to Lundgren Motors, they can walk across the intersection there? I would assume something along that line. There were no details uh, at, at all in, in what they've presented so far, but uh, there would be some, you know, possible, I don't know if it would include uh, walk, don't walk lights or just what the improvements will be, but after the plans will be coming on sometime. Well, as long as the pedestrians can get across the highway safe. Mm. The other thing I had, Mr. Mayor, is um, we are, uh, this is the time of the year when we're all looking for uh, student casuals to sign up for our two-week summer employment program. They do the mowing grass and trimming. Last time I looked, I think there were 13 or 15 names, so we've got, uh, we certainly used a lot more students. In addition, we do accept applications for a student crew leader, too. That, uh, that we're looking for a uh, casual labor employee that, uh, would start probably the end of May and work to the end of August. They must be at least 18 years of age, have a driver's license, and be enrolled in school. So stop at the city hall, they could sign up on the casual list or fill out an application. How many usually need, Mike, to fill out the well, summer? We run, uh, we usually run three at a time, and we'll run every two weeks. So during the summer months, you know, we can certainly uh, you know, go through 30 kids. And sometimes we get through the list and we start over again. Uh, sometimes we don't make it through the list. But, but I have to say this is probably one of the uh, probably one of the shortest lists we've had at this time of year. So, if you know anybody, get the word out there. Get the word. Rod, do you have anything to add? Or you're good. Uh, nothing to add unless there's any questions. I don't think anybody has any questions. We're good. Jackie, you have anything to add? No, Bonnie. No. It's no one from the audience has anything to add. <laughs> I'll adjourn the meeting. <laughs>